Hey there everyone, Derek here with a quick news update on Pokemon Go. Neontic just released the version 1.1.0 update for Pokemon Go, and it's brought a lot of changes to it. But even beyond that, Neontic has been confronting a lot of the helper websites out there like PokeVision that basically help people find where Pokemon are being located and have given them cease and desist orders, basically shutting them down and making it so they can't help players find Pokemon, which is definitely a bummer. It's, it's making it a lot harder to find specific Pokemon that players want, and it's causing a bit of a backlash to say the least. But what's not helping matters is the fact that this update has removed the steps from the nearby Pokemon list. There's no way to see exactly how close or how far each Pokemon is. You just have to so sort of go based on the list. And the one on the top left is still the closest, but now you don't know exactly how close it is, just that it's the closest one. And a lot of people think this is just it, them rebooting it back to zero so they can then fix it and not have to worry about the three-step glitch that was happening, and that might be the case, but as of right now, there is no way to see where Pokemon is, especially now that PokeVision is gone. And basically, I, there's no word yet if it's ever gonna come back that Neontic's gonna work with them in any way, and it's, it's quite unfortunate to see that kind of development happen and it's going to make it a lot harder to find the Pokemon that you want. Even tapping a specific Pokemon doesn't show exactly where you need to go. And there's a lot of other updates and alterations that have come through with this new, well, update that's being compiled thanks to Cerebi. For one, avatars can now be re-customized from the trainer profile screen. They've adjusted the battle move damage values for some Pokemon, the most famous of which is that Vaporeon has been nerfed. They've refined certain gym animations. They've improved memory issues, so the backgrounds in non-AR mode have been redone, and the Pokeball models have been redone. They've modified the battle damage calculation, there's been various bug fixes during wild Pokemon encounters, and they've moved the transfer option to the bottom right rather than having to scroll down to it. Some of the metal images have also been changed, uh, so they have more specific icons to it. Uh, they've fixed issues with displaying certain map features, parks, and non-road paths have returned. One of the bigger changes that they've had that a lot of people are not ha happy with is that they've removed the experience bonuses for nice, great, and excellent captures. Timing no longer seems to have any kind of effect. Uh, they've also updated the Egg Incubator menu to allow for purchases of new incubators right from that menu, and they've added a new feature that prevents transferring of Pokemon that have been favorited, and have removed Battery Saver Mode. So there's a lot of changes here. There's even sort of this idea going around that hasn't been fully confirmed that it might be even harder to catch Pokemon now, that it's, it's the uh, encounter, the catch rates have been completely reconfigured so it's much harder to catch Pokemon. It's all kind of unconfirmed at the moment as far as that's concerned, but everything else has been basically confirmed and a lot of these changes aren't that great. So we'll have to see what Neontic does from here to see if they improve it more or go back on some of these changes or exactly what they do with the game. But what do you guys feel about a lot of these changes that they've implemented to Pokemon Go? Uh, let us know in the comments, and of course, stay tuned to Game Explained for more on Pokemon and other things gaming as well. Alright guys, bye.